There are a lot of bad MMORPGs to play. Picking the worst one to experience is a tough choice, but it is needed as who really wants to play a good game nowadays? Don't they all suck? But jokes aside, you want to make sure you're spending hours and hours of your life in the best possible virtual world. Whether or not you want to avoid these MMOs or play them, hundreds of these games have been released to take your time and money. You really want to stay away from these MMOs as a lot of players are hopping from game to game, never finding the right one that fits them, wasting space on their computer. Computer. So this video will highlight the 10 worst MMORPGs you can play in 2022 that you really shouldn't even download unless you fancy yourself a bad time. Also, a lot of these MMOs have player bases that are just very small and die hard, not willing to leave no matter how bad the devs treat them. So if you're looking for that type of community, these may be good options for you, as the only reason that they are the worst MMOs are because there are way better ones out there that offer the average player a better experience. By the way, I'm Matthew, also by Mazarine. If you enjoyed my video, my voice, whatever it may be, consider subscribing and liking as it does help me immensely. Thank you, and let's get into it. And number 10, Wizard 101. A classic MMORPG that's been around for a very long time, released in 2008. If you ever wanted to be a wizard really bad, this is the game to play, targeting a younger audience. This MMO was a part of my elementary curriculum for whatever reason, so I spent a lot of hours back in the day playing. Definitely gives me a lot of nostalgia, but the rose-tinted glasses will not stop me from telling you why this game sucks in 2022. Wizard 101 has a turn-based combat system where you use cards with spells to cast abilities. It's like a you Gil Duel in an MMO. With top tier voice acted characters, decently designed linear storylines, and having the rare MMO ability of being beginner friendly, explaining exactly how your game works in a digestible format, it makes sense why people have been playing this game for over a decade, even though it's not a lot. Unfortunately, there are major flaws that absolutely limit this game's growth potential. One is the paywall being free to play, which really means free to bypass the launcher as if you don't spend money, you only have access to about 5% of the game. Which is kind of weird considering this MMO is targeted to younger audiences who most likely don't have the funds to be whales and drop a bunch of cash in the game. This is extended to the crown shop, aka the cash shop, where every single aspect of the game is monetized in some way. From the combat resources to the amounts costing hundreds of dollars, it's really insane to see the amount of pay to win targeted to children. On Steam, this game is hovering around 700 players. This does not factor in players who don't play on Steam, so there is a very alive, small player base if you're interested in being a wizard. And number 9, Dungeons and Dragons Online. A MMO I played back in 2010, considered by many to be the best D&D MMORPG you can play in the space. Released in 2006, this is a very old free-to-play game that was a major inspiration to many of the popular MMOs we have nowadays. With retro graphics and a prehistoric tap targeting slash action targeting combat system, completely voice acted and in-depth storylines with comprehensive dungeons that have multiple pathways and puzzles to explore, and lots of classes and races and playstyles to enjoy this really sounds all good so why is this game on this list it is because one issue ruins it all over the years dungeons and dragons online has taken a turn to the dark side some may call it pay for convenience pay to win or even pay for progression if you choose to play for free you can only progress so far because years worth of content is behind a major paywall if you want full access to the entire game you really have to drop the bag being free to play really only means a few hours of content so we get you invested to spend money this is not to take away from the game at all overall it's a very complete mmo if you can get past the outdated graphics and the small veteran player base of around 500 and are truly a DD fan this is one of the best adaptations as long as you're willing to spend that extra money and number eight alloids online if you really want to play a game like world of warcraft but refuse to play world of warcraft for whatever reason this mmo is the budget version released in 2010 our free-to-play open world theme park experience Alloids Online has taken so much inspiration for WoW, some may even claim copying to some extent. With an okay tap target and combat system, broken jumping movements, a furry race where you can control three characters, raids, dungeons, and PvP, which also includes very cool airship combat, it has all the components of a complete game with outdated graphics being over 12 years old. Reminds me a lot of classic WoW. The major mistake this game made was catering to the whales willing to drop thousands of dollars, which in turn made the free-to-play experience absolutely horrible with loot boxes containing
insane and amazing gear, the best looking mounts being in the cash shop, and a now remove system that punishes you for dying in game. And the only way to remove that negative was to spend money. Imagine you got punished for dying in an MMO and had to spend real money to remove that. Allo's Alliance's biggest mistake was prioritizing the short term money gain, which sacrificed their long term future. And number seven, Rift, a household MMORPG name known by many with one of the saddest downfalls ever seen. Released in 2011 with over 1 million active players, many claim this would finally be the game to kill WoW. A little spoiler, it didn't actually kill WoW. The standout feature was the innovative dynamic open world mechanic where rips would randomly spawn creating events of insane looking Lovecraftian inspired monsters spawning into the world for players to partake in and fight them with all their might. Also you have factions of multiple races and a very unique class system where basic warrior, mages, and classes like that can be any of the holy trinity of tank healer or DPS. So imagine you can be a healer warrior. That's pretty cool. The downfall of this promising game, which is shown with the tremendously low Steam player numbers, was the lack of innovation and graphical slash content updates. It's like the game developers gave up and left the game to rot. Many MMOs took the dynamic event Rift idea, which initially made this game very unique, and Rift made very little attempts to beat the composition of like WoW, Guild Wars, etc. Eventually falling behind, stuck in the past, slowly dying and fading away like many other MMOs. And number 6, APB Reloaded, aka All Points Bulletin, is a third person shooter MMO that is exactly like GTA 5 Online, but came out first in 2010, but the original version failed, then it was re released in 2011, having over $100 million of funding, one of the most expensive games ever to be created. This type of MMO was revolutionary for its time as the setting takes place in a massive city similar to GTA, but with the players being able to choose between factions of the law upholding enforcer or the law breaking criminal. Major highlights from APB was the in-depth character customization that also extended to your weapons and vehicles, and the player dynamic content where player actions such as robbing a store creates events for other players. A very PvP focused experience of PvE being the missions you can partake in. All this sounds good, it makes you wonder, how does a game with so much promise, essentially like GTA 5 Online, before it was a thing, fail so hard, with only a player count on Steam of 300 individuals? With major glitches and pay to win apps, aspects, it ruined the original APB reputation that led to a dramatic player loss and unfulfilled potential that GTA 5 Online showed. Really, this game dropped the ball hard and GTA just picked that up and said, yeah, we'll take it. In number 5, this is the perfect spot to put a very popular slash unpopular mobile MMORPG known as Tinder, an unbalanced gender-based game that is predominantly populated by the male player. But in most cases, the high stats female dominates the meta completely, receiving thousands of likes and plenty of options and quest lines to go down. While usually the average male player is stuck to very little to zero likes, unless they leverage the pay to win cash shop that uses special items such as boosts, tinder gold, plus, and platinum, there are various options to help you gain some XP and go in those quest lines. Unless you're a very charismatic, high stats male or female that has top tier role playing texting dialogue, there's a good chance you won't get much success on this MMORPG. So I would recommend the real life MMO instead. You're more likely to get better quest lines. Trust me. In number 4, Runes of Magic, a free-to-play tap targeting MMORPG very similar to World of Warcraft released in 2009. Some may even consider the original WoW clone that was the best. It's a fantasy based with the usual classes like Mage, Warrior, Priest, where you can combine the classes to create cool combos, adding a level of complexity. This is probably the most unique aspect of this game. Overall, it's a very bad attempt at being World of Warcraft, with outdated graphics, dungeons, raids, horrible combat system, basic quest lines. At the time of the release, it was definitely a decent MMO, but it has not evolved at all with the times, similar to Rift. With it being free to play, there's always cash ops involved. The game creates issues that you can spend money to solve, and with nothing being unique other than the crazy amount of crashes many players report to experience, you can see why the player base is around 150 individuals on Steam, which for an MMO signals an inevitable death. And number 3, Vanguard Saga of Heroes, is an infamous MMORPG for having one of the worst launches of all time as the development team was given very limited time to complete the game. When a game releases unfinished and practically unplayable, the longer they take 
take to fix these issues the more and more players leave. We literally saw this with New World in the modern day. For Vanguard, it took years to solve thousands of the bugs. It was meant to be a modern version of EverQuest. Released in 2007, was a heavily fantasy themed game with 19 races inspired by D&D and multiple classes, PvE and PvE, and an in-depth crafting system. This MMO had everything to succeed but still failed shutting down in 2014. But the story doesn't end. A lot of diehard MMO developers decided to reboot the game and for 9 years it's been running, slowly being the Develop, currently in alpha as of this video with a discord of over 800 members and a core player base around 300 in the description i will have a link to their website if you want to download the game and check it out we may see a redemption arc for vanguard in the future but time will tell if you pulled up the dictionary and searched up the definition of scam you would see star citizen and number two this mmo has been in alpha for over 10 years taking money from players to play this game in early access promising to release but continually getting delayed Star Citizen has raised over $500 million in funding, a first-person sci-fi futuristic MMORPG similar to Destiny, but less fantasy, more technological, allowing you to explore the vast universe on your spaceship to search for gas giants, frozen planets, a lot of diversity. With an action targeting combat system, from an outside perspective, this MMO looks amazing. So much potential to take that number one spot. Unfortunately, broken promises, delays, and forcing players to spend anywhere from hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars to buy a ship to play early access for a game of multiple bugs makes you wonder how does an MMO raise over $500 million and charges players to play an unfinished version but has no confirmed release date? Star Citizen may never release. Do not invest in this game. Wait and see if it actually comes out because it may be a top game, but don't get scammed by investing in something that may never come out. In number one, New Frontier. Formerly known as Wild West Online, they changed the name because of all the negativity they were receiving. If you go to the old Steam page, you will find hundreds of comments saying, do not buy this game. It's a scam. Released in 2019, it's a cowboy Wild West themed sandbox MMORPG that has a high focus on open world PvP. With an action targeting combat system with the guns and knives, it really is a beautiful game to look at. You're able to ride horses, fight players, build houses, hunt animals, and gather materials. The best way to explain this MMO is imagine you have a tray of good food, but you trip and it ends up in the garbage. You don't want it anymore because it's around a bunch of trash. There are good features within New Frontier, but because the majority of the game is garbage, you want nothing to do with with him. When it was Wild West Online, it completely scanned its player base as people bought the game then quickly realized it was unfinished and non-functional. Demanding refunds, the game server shut down ghosting the players and running away with the money they took. New Frontier is the exact same thing as they abandoned their game but has not shut down yet. If you really want to play a bad MMO, this is the game for you. But that's the list guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and like and let me know what's the worst MMO you've ever played. I'm very curious. Thank you and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.